Hey there, it's been a long time since the last devlog and I think it's about time I gave an update with what's been going on with the project. I like to say there's been a lot of changes to the game since the last devlog, but I haven't really been able to devote my time to game development lately. I only started development again around mid-January, so most of the progress that I'm going to show you in this devlog starts from there. So on today's devlog, I'll be showing you guys the card editor that I've been working on for the last couple of weeks. It's not much, but I think it's a good start to 2023. At least that's what I think. I was going to tackle the AI first, but after having left the game for so long, I figure I undertake something much more simpler. Anyway, before I talk about the card editor, let's talk a bit about how the card in my game works since that's what the card editor is for. I never really talk about the cards in my previous devlog, which is kinda silly since they are kinda important for the game. So to rectify that, let's discuss the cards for a bit. The cards in our games are broken down into four major components. First there's the card itself, which displays the card's visuals and handles the interaction logic between the player and the game. Then there's the card data. A custom resource object which contains the entire card's data like its name, description, type, and etc. This gets attached to the card. Then there's a card action collection, another custom resource object which holds codes that affect something on the board. This gets attached to a specific type of card, the command card. And lastly, there's the card unit collection, another custom resource object which holds other cards in them. This get attached to a specific type of card data, the unit card data. So that is for all the individual parts for the cards. The cards themselves don't do much. The game have handled most of the logic behind them. What they are, are data containers. And as you can see, the cards have a lot of info inside them. I could edit this data in the inspector. But even with just the few fields I have, it was already becoming a mess. What I needed in the card editor was simple. I needed some way to show the cards and its information in the editor as it would be in the game. This was easy enough, so that was the first thing I made for the editor. Next, I needed to be able to edit all of the cards that and save it. However, there's a bit of a problem with that. The numbers and strings are simple enough to edit, but the real challenge, at least for me, was to edit the area of effect of the cards. I needed to make a specific type of grid field for those. The second problem was the card and action collection fields. As far as I know, there isn't a pre-made field like the line edit node that I can just use to get the dictionary of both of this resource object which they rely on. Now enough about all the requirements and struggles. Here you can see the card editor tab that I made. Right now, I'm still missing the action editor for the command cards and card collection editor for the unit cards, but I think I can hold off on making those at the moment. Currently, you can drag the card data resource into the editor to edit a card, and alternatively, you can use the drop down menu here to access all the cards in the card data folder inside the resource game resource folder. The editor is context context sensitive, so if a command card is dropped into the editor or selected in the drop that menu, it will change to reflect that card. At the same time, that can be said about the unit cards as well. Over here, you have your base info field. These are info all cards have. Down here, you have the contextual stat field, which changes depending on the card type. And up here, you can save and reset the cards. And finally, over here is the AOE Pattern Editor. The AOE Pattern Editor took me a few days to implement, but in the end it functions pretty well. Here's the full script of how it works. If you look at the in-game footage, you can see that each card has a different shape to the affected shell. Previously, I would have to enter the coordinates inside the area of effect field, one by one. This was both tedious and con time consuming. So to combat that, I then use a preset resource object that contains pre-written coordinates to be shared by all the cards. This somewhat helps since I can just reuse the same area of effect pattern for all the cards, 
but what if I needed to edit this preset as well? I needed to make something like the AOE pattern editor in order to fully fix the problem. Now I have a visual representation of the AOE pattern inside the editor. The first cell in the grid represents the origin of the AOE. The origin doesn't necessarily need to be in the center of the grid. I can just place it anywhere in the editor and it automatically translates into the right coordinate to be used inside the game board. I had a lot of help on that part from ChatGBT, which is a chatbot you could ask for help for things like writing an essay or in my case to help me find the right algorithm to solve the problem. For the specific, this is what I asked ChatGBT. I have an array that stores the x and y coordinates of a 9 by 9 grid. I want one of the coordinates to be the center. All the other coordinates need to change their value relative to the center. How can I achieve this? Use GDScript to write an example of it, which is the programming language used by Godot Game Engine. It gave me back this answer. The answer was simple, yet I would have probably spent some time just trying to figure it out. Mostly because I overthink things. I'm not sure how long the AI will be publicly available, but I'll probably be going to use it as best as I can while I still can. Probably not to write every code in my game, mostly just feeding it my code and seeing if I can improve on it somehow. And that's pretty much it for the card editor. I'm probably going to continue improving on it as I develop the game. It's go not going to be in the final game, however, it's just to make making cards a bit faster for me. I might include it as a separate tool or something so that player can add in their own card but we will see. There are still a lot of stuff to do for the game like the AI for one which is the biggest hurdle at the moment. The first thing I need to do on that front is make it so that enemies can pick a card in their deck. Hopefully I can make them do that for the next devlog. On another note, it seems I gained a couple of subscribers. I know it might not seem like it, but it really did make me want to start making more devlogs again. So thanks to the few subscribers that I have. And a few more things before we wrap up this devlog. The art I'm using right now is just my programmer's art. I'm a bit concerned that people might look at this and think this will be how the end product will be. But eventually, I'm going to replace all of the art in the game. Though to what I'm not sure yet. And that's the end of this devlog. Thank you for watching and though it's a bit late, happy new year and hope to see you guys on the next devlog.